there is a reason that we keep coming back to investing in the hard things. My favorite thing about running Boston would be obviously that like the whole family got to come. Like it was, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. <laughs> um, it was like quite a moment to see my kids, um, see mom do something hard. What are you training for? Boston, I just got my official registration that I'm in today. You did you? That was a good doctor's appointment. Um, yeah, that might be the last time I see the hip specialist. Kids are way better at cheering than adults. We hold back. We're more self-aware. But over the last 18 months, I've gotten back to cheering like a kid. Let's go! Come on, Bay, let's go! This is Eau Claire, Wisconsin. This is where I live. I absolutely love the downtown area. These streets can be quiet at night and in the morning, but during the day, they're nice and busy with business and people. And of course, Marathon Sunday. 2021, they held the marathon in the fall, and it's one I'll never forget. And I remember running the race itself and being at like four or five miles, just thinking, oh, this is like a good pelvis day. <laughs> I'm, having a good, I'm having a good groin day. Yes, I said good groin day. I entered the race with a nagging hip and groin injury. But more about that later. For now, these finish line vibes are what you always dream about. But the best part of it was, I didn't know if like my son had finished or not finished that 5K. I kind of forgot like where I was at the end, like if I should look for him or there's just all these people and medals and photographers and all of a sudden like um, someone just put him right in front of me, you know, and I just remember seeing him um, so happy and he put his my medal around me and it was just so special, you know. Seeing my son run the 5k at the end of the marathon for me was one of the biggest runner's highs I've ever had. But we all know runner's highs don't last forever and it was all gonna come crashing down very soon. Most of November and all of December, I shut it all down and I was like, I'll just be able to build slowly back in January. At first I was excited, even though I was kind of disappointed, but then it got really disappointing and even more depressing when I wasn't recovering well and when it wasn't just kind of a quicker fix than I imagined. You know? Like the whole family has probably felt my uh, my stress and change this last year. You know, it's been it's been a wild ride, and I can laugh about it now. But there were some pretty. I mean, one year ago, right now, I think I was still run walking. So that's kind of crazy to see and and get perspective. I've got my stuff. I gotta do. I can't just like wake up at 5 a.m. and go out the door like I used to. Although I still do run early mornings. I just gotta do this beforehand. Depending on where I've been out of my recovery, I used to have to do a ton, and now I kinda know what it means to warm up and do all the little things. And part of us bringing it up on this podcast is to give, hopefully, give a little perspective because I feel like I've needed perspective and I have a little bit more than I did a year ago. And um, anyway, let's get into what you were doing in the spring. I started training kind of in COVID with the plans to do, we've talked about this before, grandmas, yes. and then it got canceled. And But I was kind of prepping for like, I want to run a marathon. Let's like train for a marathon and see what happens because I've always done some shorter stuff. Uh, 
Alicia doing a big city marathon, traveling, having the whole family come out. This is like so antithetical to how she typically operates because she's pretty low key. She doesn't really care about racing. If she wanted to go crush it, she could crush it more than she does, but she's just more laid back. For me, it's like not even about the race, right? I think the process and like the getting out there every day with a friend and the memories you're making along the way than just the race itself. I have some really fun memories with my friend I train with. We're training for Boston. It is a blizzard out here. Winter weather warning. Oh. Oh, that was hard. That was sticking hard. Oh. Big physical day. I ended up going three hours <clears throat> for about 25 miles, but it is way windier, way icier, way colder than the first time I did this. <clears throat> I can tell I'm needing more calories per hour here. 10 years ago for my 30th birthday, I did rim to rim to rim. I ran across the Grand Canyon and back. Um, I made that a 50 mile day based on the trails that I did. And I read up on the routes and read up on the training and then um, kind of got into ultra running. I am up and it is 4.40 in the morning on my birthday. I'm gonna go around the Grand Canyon today. Super pumped. You can see I still got my long johns on. But then fast forward 10 years later, I'm nice and injured my whole 39th year of life. And so once I kind of got back on board with some cross training and some running, this go at it was quite different just with my confidence and my stage of life and um, my fitness. Out for another run in the snow. Winter in Wisconsin. Guess what month it is? No, it's not December. It's not January. It's March. I am one month away from boarding a plane to the Grand Canyon. Started to get some doubt and imposter syndrome here <laughs> as it becomes a little bit more real. Um, just as I'm not running the same kind of miles I used to, I'm experimenting more with cross training. But boy, if anything, it just feels good to get out. My spirit and mind opened up here at the beginning of a week. It's Monday morning here. This never gets old. Being able to walk up, park. Well, I, could, I guess you could say I'm pretty nervous. I just don't know what shape I'm in. <laughs> to be honest, I think I'm second guessing myself quite a bit here. Here we go. South Kaibab Trail. It is 5.53 in the morning and we are popping off here. Gonna be a good long day. Great weather. I'm off. Trail has no ice at the top I saw yesterday. A little bit of muddy stuff here. But we are on the birthday celebration. <laughs> the awe and the grandeur of the Grand Canyon. There's just like nothing like it. To get out there and to see it with your own eyes and to, and to actually run into the Grand Canyon as the sun is coming up on the South Kaibab Trail is just something I will never ever forget. It was amazing. kind of getting by the mule train there. I feel like I got the full experience of being in the canyon. Thank you. What a day. I 
am almost to the north rim. I am very tired. I've been just power walking, hiking this whole middle part here. Here's a soupy tunnel. Well, hello. Supai tunnel. That was a bear. This trail is totally washed out. So yeah, I'm up at the Supai tunnel and that's where the snow begins. North trail here. I almost turned back. I don't know if I will turn back. I got into a good rhythm power hiking on the North Rim and there was quite a bit of snow that slowed me down. And I think my, um, my, my climbing muscles, like my climbing mode was on full blast on the North Rim because you're just fighting the snow. Getting to the North Rim and being halfway done was actually super emotional. I kind of lost it for about <laughs> 10 seconds because it wasn't until then I actually believed I would get there. I, I thought so many times I would turn back early. <laughs> Let's go. Here's the old North Rim. By the time I ran back down, I felt that's the best stretch I had is actually running back down from the North Rim back to the river where I'm almost done. I've never been to the Grand Canyon in the winter, but I feel like I'm kind of cheating a little and getting getting the snowy experience here at the top. Well, look at, I mean, look at this. Come on, baby. Are you serious right now? Let's go. That's right. Happy Easter, everybody. Woo! <laughs> Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Woo! <laughs> I'm going down the rim. <laughs> Back at the river. Uh, I just gotta go back up. Seven miles to go. 35 down, seven to go. But these will be tough. That's all I got. And the only thing I had left was the climb back out. And that was a bear, like I already said. Once I started just going back upwards, my body like rejected everything I had in it. It kind of like, it kind of like didn't have climbing mode in it. And I puked like five times, just a bunch of stomach acid and gels and everything I had in my stomach. And then I kind of knew I was, I wasn't in trouble, you know, like I wasn't like um, thinking I was going to have to call out like emergency, but I just knew there's no water um, in that last stretch. Um, I was in a pretty rough place with cramping. He called me the last, like wherever you get cell phone service. I could just tell from your voice alone that I've seen Adam in his lowest of lows running yeah. and I could like, I was like, oh, I could like hear it even in your voice that like you were pretty depleted. Yeah. And so I remember because it was kind of late at night, I waited. Well, let me, let me give my last update because the sun's going down and I'm really close to finishing, but it might be a little bit in the dark and I have to rest anyway. It's been a great day. Oh my goodness, I didn't think I would actually touch the North Rim. I ran well from the North Rim down to the river, but this river climb out. River to the South Rim is just kicking my butt. I think I'm pretty dehydrated. I've got a lot of leg cramps, a lot on both legs. <clears throat> but I also started, it makes sense if I'm a little dehydrated. I started the climb by puking about five times with just water and stomach acid that came out. So anyway, it's been a rough one. Kind of a epic bonk on South Kaibab Trail, which is the toughest steepest it's actually the shortest way out but it's by far the steepest it's just killing me but i'm still looking around at this canyon and able to take it in i'm not getting down on myself i got no one to impress nobody freaking cares 
about what time I do it in. I know everyone wants me to be safe. I want to be safe. And it's been a great day. Oh my goodness. A great day. Running you know, activity, moving, hiking, like being outdoors, like there, there, I felt like I got the full range. I was alone, dehydrated, bonking in the Grand Canyon all by myself on a long trail run. And then eight days later, I'm a spectator um, having a blast with kids, with tens of thousands of people at like the biggest marathon in America. She just has not taken the approach of like getting every single ounce of um, of every single PR out of herself, and it's something I really admire, to be honest, because she's very open-handed and um, very sure of herself with her running. So this was an opportunity for us to kind of flip the flip the tables. That's probably the wrong use of flip the tables. Flip the script. Mm. Trade the tables. What am I trying to say, Alex? <laughs> flip the script Tr trade places this is where <laughs> this is where like we kind of traded roles a little bit where the family traveled got to see mom rock and roll at a big time event where she's usually kind of anti fanfare anti um, big event one two What's your number one mission? Oh, to help mom finish. To help mom finish. Yeah. yeah. Everyone say, go mommy. Go mommy. Boston Dog. one of you were going to say okay, to see this. Kipchoge. She's Boston Dog. Another thing to do. Okay, we got to look for a Honda. I go into race day being like, regardless of how I do, I give it my best. Yes. I give it my best that day. We're going to go back to back, baby. How did your race go, Alicia? Tell us. I was pretty anxious. <laughs> But right, that's the reality of it, right? There was like a lot of, um, we stayed really far out, which we wanted to do to save some money because um, we're going with our whole family. Anxious and, I'm and frugal, a, this is our family. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's about to go down. We, we see the time. We see the time car. Leo, right here. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! Let's go! Get Jogi! Let's go, guys! Let's go, get Jogi! Let's go! You see him? I saw him. You saw him right in there. He was in like third place. Here comes a lot more. Oh, let's go, guys! Woo you know, just to experience the Boston Marathon, the way that I experienced it for the very first time was like probably one of the coolest days of running in my life and I was not racing. Let's go, Bates! Let's go! Let's go, Sarah! Let's go, Sarah Hall! Let's go, Dandy! Dandy! Let's go! Allie, girl! Do you see her? Do you see Desi? Do you see Hall? Let's go! Just like, cause Shauna was in a totally different corral. And so I was just like standing All there right. by myself and I'm like, okay, it's time to go. And we went Where's and it was, I don't know, I'm getting emotional. I know. Um, it was just like awesome. There's people all around you and it was a let's great go, experience. But at the same time, like that's what I mainly wanted to share is like, I like, there's all these people, but at the same time it did feel like which I don't know if other people feel this way. Like it felt really like lonely yeah. because I don't know any of those people. There was like this sense of like, well, who am I high-fiving? Like, I want to see my people. All right, where's she at? Lisha, 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 Lisha! Ah! Ah! Let's go! Come on, Bray, let's go! We saw her. She looks good. How do you guys think she looks? Good, really good. She, I think she looks great. That's where we started to watch them, yes. But now we could go here, but we're actually going to go to the finish. 
Yep, we made it. We're gonna get out here. We good, babe? We're going to the finish. She's doing it. I can see why people chase the big races and I'm right. not downplaying that. Like, that's awesome. Like. I just think for someone that is a little bit more like, I don't want to say even reserved, but to explain the finish was like almost being like famous. You know, you have like all these people and there's like a high to that. And I fully embraced it too. I'm like, I am here. I'm going to like take this in. Um, but at the end of the day, like there's more to me than that. Yeah. Mile 26, mile 26. All right, we got mom coming, yeah? The finish line was just like spectacular. And we, we saw you, which is crazy. Right, I like, like heard Adam We were on the other name. side of the street at the Boston Marathon where there's just like tens of thousands of people screaming. And like, I mustered up all my vocal cords and Alicia could hear us and came across. Like that was probably the proudest that we were is to see you finish, but also have us connect and like have us see you and you see us right before the finish. There she is! She's on the other side! Lisha! Lisha! Ah! Come on! Let's go! You got it! You're finishing! Let's go! She's doing great. She's finishing. My favorite parts isn't necessarily like the quintessential big Boston, um, big finish line moments. Like everyone has those, but it's like is. the before and the after. Hey, go get mama. Let her sit down, yeah? Let her sit down. Go get that mama. Go get that mama. Hi. Come here. Good job. Are you okay? So cold. I got your jacket. Hobbling back to your Airbnb. Go up the ramp, mama. <laughs> Get your railing going. <laughs> you know, like realizing once we got there that our Airbnb is up three flights of stairs and like kind of making a joke the whole weekend that like mom's gonna have to come up these after her race and she's gonna have to go down the next morning and having the kids help you and laughing about it. My and, darn frugalness. Yeah. <laughs> We've got post-race hair. Okay, we got a kid that's gonna poop. We gotta go poop. This is, this is the post-race life. I don't wanna see your <laughs> I just want to take a shower. <laughs> Look at your it hair. Hurts. It's like you're oh, starting it's some like rat's nest. Hurt. And like the next day was a family day. Like we legitimately toured Boston a little bit. What'd you do yesterday? I ran the Boston Marathon. Hey, what are you doing today? Going down some steps. <laughs> Come on, babe, the Uber's coming in 11 minutes. Do you think we'll make it? I think I did a pretty good job. We found a trampoline park for the kids because they're going crazy, you know? They need an outlet that's appropriate for them as well. Kind of like we're walking through this experience as a team. That was, that. that's what I really liked about it. My favorite thing about running Boston would be obviously that like the whole family got to come like it was i don't know why i'm getting emotional <laughs> um it was like quite a moment to see my kids um see mom do something hard and they had seen me in the other marathons too but um i think they've always seen you push and um i think it's really important for them to see mom push through something hard too and it was extra special because it was the big year of um, 40. I have a fear of this um, video or documentary or basically anything that we put online sometimes where people get the wrong perception about how amazing the Grand Canyon was or how amazing Boston was or how amazing owning a business is or how, how easy it is to fall in love and move back to your college town and raise kids and like the reality is all of these fantastic, great, grand things are like really hard. And I think that's one thing that was highlighted in my climb out of the Grand Canyon is like 
I told myself I would never do anything like that again because of how painful and hard it was. And I actually told myself that 10 years ago when I climbed out <laughs> on my 30th birthday. And I think the reason we keep coming back to this stuff isn't because we forget how hard it is. I think it's because the pain and the hard work is worth what you get out of it. And when you're sober minded and see that like running a business is hard, it's like I, there are so many days I, I like want to give up. And I'm not like exaggerating that. There's a lot of days when Alicia and I are not doing well and we want to give up. And I'm not exaggerating about that either. Nothing is as easy as it seems when you put it in a video or put it online. Hey, we're the convicts! Nothing is as good as it seems sometimes. But there is a reason that we keep coming back to investing in the hard things. So what is the reason we would do hard things? We would invest in the harder things in life intentionally bring about pain and suffering in a way that's calculated where we wake up and we run in the cold we intentionally put ourselves through a small painful moment a painful workout a suffering of sorts why would we intentionally do this and teach our kids even that the way of life is not necessarily through comfort why would we teach them this backward logic that comfort is not in your best interest well, here's my reason. My reason is the pain and the suffering will not always be voluntary. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when the painful moments, the painful seasons, the suffering months, the suffering days, the hard years won't be voluntary. They will sort of come upon you they will find you. They will seek you out. And so when those days come, and when those sufferings come, that come upon us, that we didn't ask for, we've lived a life that knows how to deal with the pain, that knows how to get through something and not just around it. Somebody much smarter than me once wrote, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Our pain and our sufferings can lead to hope. We can still cheer them on. We can turn this into a slide. Yeah, we need a post marathon day slide. We got mom trailing behind a little bit. You doing okay, mom? Yeah. How are those stairs back there? Oh, the steps. Hills. Ready? Escalators out. <laughs> mom doesn't need no stinking elevator. She's so tough. She's Boston strong. All right, to wrap this up. What, it, what are you looking forward to most this coming year? Like, do you have any running goals? Like, what are you doing right now for your running other than getting your back adjusted? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I came back from Boston, turned 40, and I feel <laughs> and like done. I'm like elderly. She's done. One and done. <laughs> well, that's kind I'm just of what kidding. my mentality are kind of always was one and done, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I just don't really have a desire to run more marathons if I i'm love, just being honest I love you so much. um i don't know what it i honestly like feel cripple most days <laughs> just getting out of bed it's not running it doesn't bother me when i'm running i just like i need to get my back figured out